Welcome to a very special episode of Stoked, our preview look at Star Trek Online. Now, Star Hands Trek on. Online yes. is kind of a game that everybody's talking about these days. 35 days away. My name is Chris. And I'm Jeremy. And that's Jeremy. Hey there, Jeremy. So, Hi. Uh, good to see you again. We're doing a little early release, a, an exclusive look at Star Trek Online. This isn't an actual episode of Stoked. This comes between episodes. Yeah. And th- if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, we're actually doing this live. We've yep. got folks in our chat room. And a little bit later on, we're going to be taking some Skype calls yep. as sort of a question and answer. But we're yep. going to start off um, with us giving you mm-hmm. our hands-on preview Right, and before we go too far, we should say, now again, this is uh, our experiences and impressions based on the gameplay that we've played of, right. of the beta game, so it, things are kind of in flux. Yeah, though. it's a work in progress. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's just our personal experiences. So right. take take everything we say with that, and then... Plus, we might end up, well, we probably will <laughs> end up making uh, gross assumptions that are yeah. way off track. That we should just apologize for. <laughs> <of time>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, so why don't we start off with... Um, just as a, just a framework mm-hmm. for the review, um, you know uh, this this game Star Trek Online in its different uh, incarnations through Perpetual and all the things that we've covered in the history, something mm-hmm. I've been looking forward to for many years. Many, and so uh, one of the things is that's a really really big expectation to live up to. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like uh, <laughs> yeah. As a as a game developer, I've almost got this pie in the sky ideal game that is not really realistic. So uh, I, you know, I tried. It's what? like when you go into the movies and you see this amazing trailer, and then you're yeah. always worried that the movie won't live up to the trailer. Especially, and even more so if it was like a movie based on your favorite book ever, right? And then you just you gotta see it. It's like if Duke Nukem Forever came out today, it would no way be able to live up to what I've been wanting for you know years and years. Right. So, but going forward, I just wanted to just, let's just kick off, uh, Jeremy. Why don't you give your uh, first? Why don't I? Impressions when you first got your hands on the game. Let's not count packs because we've already covered packs in a previous okay. episode. We did play for a little bit, mm-hmm. like a like a, uh, a pre-selected mission at PAX 2009. Right. Uh, we put a video out about that. If you're curious to see that, we got that's over um, on our YouTube channel. But you know, once you could actually get in the game, create a character, and log in for the first time, uh, walk us through that for you. For me, um, well, uh, just starting at the absolute top, the very first thing that came up is as soon as you start the game, you hear. Bum, bum, bum. Oh yeah, yeah. Bum, and it just makes your hair stand on end. <laughs> yeah, you get you get the horns, the, yeah. the Star Trek horns. That ding, doom, yeah, ding. the yeah. sound quality, the the choice of sound effects and yeah. music in this game is ninety percent top notch. Yeah, um, yeah. The sound quality is uh, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. it's really it, it, one of the best sounding. They must use lossless sound files. They must have. It's and incredible. It, it, it was just great. All they, right. You know, so, probably working directly with the CBS and Paramount helped them out on that. Front. Oh, yeah. So they didn't have to recreate a lot of these. They just yeah, they're used not the like yeah, they're sounds. not like that like that karaoke knockoff that you get right. sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Like I had a DS game and the music was like uh, uh, an equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's it's very true to form, and they have. I do have to say though that the the opening theme starts classic, starts awesome, and then like five minutes in, it turns into something not. Well, it keeps playing. Quite. It almost kind of has a kind of a Star Wars sound to it. Yeah, and almost a little bit of. Change Champions Online sound to yeah, it, like a almost, little bit like superheroes. I kind of, it's still kind of, it's meant to amp you up. I think a it is. Uh, it's kind of got a fast pace, like workout music almost, while you're sitting there creating your character. <laughs> and we should mention that the whole interface is uh, all Elcar's themed, like a like yeah. a computer from mm-hmm. Star Trek. Not colors wise, because those colors are are kind of harsh. You know, I, they look great on television, but if you've ever actually seen a computer using an Elcar's interface with the classic colors. They're a little over the top. Yeah, and, and well, they, so, they started changing like in the later movies and stuff, and so they're just kind of an evolution of that. Yeah, but so the uh, the user interface in Star Trek Online it has, is much more toned down colors, basically a lot of shades of blue, um, which is kind of the Federation's color. Um, but it does have the Elkar's borders and the smooth lines and everything like that. It's mm-hmm. really, and, really sleek. And when you're inter- when you're interacting with the interface, just to even log in or create your character, you get all the little Elkar sound effects. Mm-hmm. You just press little a button, computer here. beeps <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. it's um, awesome. Now, Again, the sound effects are just top notch. Is there anything that you want to talk about on the character creator side of things that we ha- we haven't already seen a lot of before? I mean, well, it's hard to say first impressions about the character creator because it is most obviously one of the half finished um, uh, features of the game. Yeah, it's definitely which, changed just in the time period that I've been in closed beta. I'd say yeah. it's, it's become a lot more complete. 
Yes, um, much more. But you can already see that there's still some features that just aren't yet implemented. It's a hard thing for them to get right because there's 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 literally like five sliders just to control your face look, appearance. Yeah. And so it's, at, and at one point you can add a scar to your character, yeah. and then there's another six sliders for the scar. So it's it's uh, now that said though, one of the things they did not to overwhelm people is there's also just uh, there's randomize, yeah. which does a pretty good job, and there's mm-hmm. also like select from one or two and it just kind of does like a, a yeah there's a number of presets for yeah. everything that you do um, yeah. so when you go through you get to choose your uh, race so you can do a preset race like the, the canned ones or you can do a, um, and do you remember so let's see you have uh, on the federation side you can play um, well we should actually say right up front that this is all going to be federation because the Klingons are we might get into them a little bit towards the end of this but um we didn't get to play them much no not, not for our first impressions uh, but so on the federation side you can do humans Vulcans um Andorian. Andorian, you can do a Bajoran, Bajoran. or a Ferengi. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right. Those are the basic basic. And then you can also races. do you can also do a um, a totally blank alien where you just make your own based right. on all the little things you can tweak. And right. it's very cool. Um, and you also have one a One thing of- that I did notice also though is if you, if you pick a pre made race like humans, mm-hmm. um, your facial morphology um, uh, your sliders that control things that you, like your your jaw length and stuff like that yeah. have much more strict limitations to keep them more human oh, looking really? than the uh, than the custom races. Okay, so you're not going to end up having humans with eyes out to here. Yeah, um, okay. but you might have custom alien races that do have that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the different races also have um, some different bonus. Mm-hmm. traits. That they there are with. far too many to actually mention here, but I think that there was an article that came out a few weeks back that's got many of them listed. Right. Um, I would say to be honest, I, most of them are probably going to change anyway. And and my but my general takeaway is none of them... Oh yeah, and Bullions. Oh yeah, Bullions. Yeah. None of them are so substantial that you'll probably pick one race over the other in most no, cases. No, no. Um, and you don't get penalized for picking one race over the other. Each one does offer something, even just a generic human, you right. get something. In fact, um, the human bonuses are pretty awesome. Yeah, I think it's, it's like, like leadership a, and stuff. Yeah, I think it's a, a damage a damage bonus to right. an entire away team. Right, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, and so you once you get through creating the character, you are brought into a tutorial immediately. And it's a tutorial, and it's kind of framed up as a couple of missions back-to-back that uh, are gameplay. So it's not a um, one of those tutorials where it's... it's, it's like, if you remember, like, um, S- Star Fox. We were just playing Star Fox last night. Right. <laughs> Star Fox has a tutorial mode. That yeah, we is, were playing Star Fox. Is you just fly through loops, and that's all it is. <laughs> and, you know, it was like very obvious. No, this is a tutorial w- with an objective that also impacts the storyline, which I particularly like. Having come from Champions, where I got really burnt out on the, st- on the, t- on the tutorial. Yeah. Um, this, uh, so one of the things they added during our beta testing is the voiceover by uh, Zachary Quinto, which that's is... That's right. Um, he is in there to it's help It's a two-part you. thing. It's not only is he doing a voice of just a generic, like use your arrow keys to move forward, you know, things like that. But he's also actually playing a character um, that is sort of your mentor, your father figure, the if holographic, you will. The holographic. The, the EMH yeah. on one of the um, ships that you go and save mm-hmm. during the, the tutorial one mission. Of the sites, one of the news sites out there recently reported that he was an emergency command hologram, which is not correct. He is an emergency medical hologram. That's I right. know that just rocked all of your worlds. Um, I'm sorry if I just shook everything you knew to its core. <laughs> uh, so going forward, you know, it's... Um, the uh, tutorial is you 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 can you you, you by the end of the tutorial you've got a storyline reason why you're in the command of a starship. Yes, and um, we can go ahead and give that away. That's part of the tutorial. It was one of the first impressions. Um, it basically the tutorial walks you through. First, you're on the uh, ground mission. It gives you a little in, uh, in interactive. Um, uh, it's hard to to say how exactly it. Wait, wait, what are you trying to think of? It basically, it teaches you how to interact with the world. Oh, yeah, It's not yeah. combat right off the bat. Right, yeah. Well, you need to know how to push buttons, and you right. need to know how to talk to people. Right, and so how they, to so identify a, where things are so you when get you're looking sign, at them. So you get a sign, you know, go talk to this captain on the bridge, go enter these commands into the console, right. go do these things, and it's all pretty straightforward. And In fact, it's a little too straightforward, to be honest. The entire interaction with everything that we've encountered so far is just press F to interact. Yeah, but at the same time, um, you know, that's... It's easy, it, and it doesn't drag you out of the game. You know, it makes it really easy to just keep the action going that way. Yeah, I was going to say, because if, if you had to sit there and interact with it a lot more, the tutorial would really, uh, would really kind of bog down. It would, but Plus, at the same time, sometimes when you're doing things like, you don't do this in the tutorial, but what if you're trying to save your ship from a, a warp core breach or something like that? Just hitting F's kind of anticlimactic. It is. Well, it would, it would be much I think better what they if they do, had some sort of a, a interface. It'll be a series of things, a task you have to do. Sure. I mean, I don't know many 
many MMO type games where there's a lot more than just that kind of level of interaction. No, that's true. I, I think it's just because it's a Star Trek game that I kind of expect a little more from it. Yeah, and people, you know, people will probably uh, be okay with that during the tutorial. There's some there's some times later in the game where I thought, well, that was a little too easy. Mm-hmm. But it's just kind of corny. But it was more about the journey to get there than it was the end result of pushing that button or something. Right. Yeah. Sure. So, you know, that's something to that's something to consider. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So by the end of the tutorial, you'll end up with a bridge officer and a ship. Right. That's right. And uh, you immediately kick off with uh, fighting the Borg and. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, but not the Borg. It seems that these Borg that you encounter during the, uh, tutorial are somehow unplugged right. or incomplete. And, and we in don't really way. know a lot about that. No, uh, apparently you're going to learn more about, um, why those Borg were like that later on. But there is one really cool place part that I want to mention that I just learned this. I reran the tutorial just the other day to, to refresh brush up just yeah. for this uh, yeah. occasion. And, uh, there was a dead Borg laying in a hallway somewhere that looked like the new ones from the screenshots. Oh, yeah, you know, with the yeah. additional amputations right. and things like that. Mm-hmm. And two um, bridge officers, just NPCs, standing over and going, well, what if a whole bunch like this show up? This one is clearly far more advanced. How are we going to fight this weaponry? I did not see that before. Yeah, that was a really cool little hint of things to come. Well, I was really what, impressed with that. That's what's been one of the things about the game, too, is as, as they've continued to work on it, there's been things that have been there mm-hmm. or have not been there that then show up later when you go back through right so uh, that's kind of nice but just knowing when the game's out you know i'm going to go through this again in open beta and then when the game's out again i'm going to go through it again mm-hmm. and it's nice to know there'll be a few things there that i haven't seen before right uh, I, sh- I should jump back i wanted to mention um one of the neat things they kind of w- introduce you right up front is you you're you're on um a ship and you're combating the borg but you don't just pull out the phaser. Now, you, there is some of that for sure in the tutorial. Right. But well, they have to teach you how to fight. One of the objectives, though, is to get the Borg off the ship using um, the transporter. Yeah. And beaming them out into space. Which is an awesome effect. They have this, uh, like, force-fielded off section of the ship. There, there's just, a section of the hull that's missing. Yeah. And, and you beam them right on the other side of that. There's like section. debris sitting there, and it, it yeah. shows like it's being blown in yeah. a vacuum and stuff. And then when you it's beam great. them out there, they 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 materialize, and then they, <laughs> yep, <laughs> and they get, get sucked out of the ship. <laughs> Which is a neat way. It's kind of I think Cryptic's way of saying, hey, you know, you're not always going to be doing combat. Right. Now that said, that's pretty much all I've done since then is combat. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the very next part after you first get your ship, um, it turns out that these Borg were for some reason targeting officers. That's why you end up in charge of your own ship. You were the, the ranking officer, uh, even though you're just just an ensign. So uh, there's a lot. There's a lot going on that we, in our experience so far in the beta, have not uncovered yet. There's something. There's something to do with with why the Borg are the way they are. Yes. Why are there Why are there more advanced Borg? Why are there Borg that are acting strange that mm-hmm. are kind of the traditional Borg we know? Why are they targeting only command officers? Right. These are things that are not yet revealed to us, and it's it kind of hints at a lot more content that's kind of in in the overall story arc of the game that we haven't even seen yet. Right. Right after you get your ship is a section that is an, again more non combat um, gameplay. It's also just introducing you to how to steer your ship oh yeah, yeah. and things like that um, yeah. to be honest the first time i went through this i got terribly lost i could not find you I, basically I you have too. to fly around in a, in a sector and locate these four stranded ships beam off their survivors did you, now the first time you threw was and take them to a medical because ship. you didn't you didn't notice the nav beacons well there were two things um one was that uh the npcs have the same basically target targeting reticle as other players and the, at the time when I first ran the tutorial, there were a lot of other players just getting into the game. So you were having a hard time on screen distinguishing between yes. an actual character uh, uh, of the game. Like and a, my course objective. Right. I gotcha. So I kept going after other ships that were that I thought were the, the right one, and they weren't. And mm-hmm. and I didn't know how to steer ships yet. <laughs> yeah, that's been kind of... That's kind of been... Um, uh, but at the like, same time, it was a great way to teach me how to get used to piloting my ship and to um, locating. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was just reading the chat room. <laughs> and to locating mission objectives and things like that, uh, and yeah. and getting used to how three D space feels as well. Right. They made a conscious decision to not really enable uh, full up down. You can only really go forward and back, and you can go up and you can mm-hmm. fly down, but you can't just hit a button and your ship just goes up. Right. Right. Which is good because it. It gets too, it would get far too complicated in space. It's already a little disorienting. Yeah. Um, with how much you can tilt your ship, mm-hmm. um, you can go probably what is that about a seventy five degree angle up or down? I don't know about the Miranda. The Miranda is kind of not yeah. as maneuverable. That's true. Yeah, you start out with a Miranda class vessel, or which could also actually I, I learned later on having rerun the tutorial a number of times. Your first ship is random from the starting ships. You can either have oh. the Miranda, the Centaur, or the. Sh- 
Shikar. I've been through the tutorial twice and got the Miranda both times. I have gotten all three. Have so, you? Yeah. I've known, you know, that makes sense because I've noticed other people at my level didn't have the Miranda and I thought, there's no way. Did they buy it already? I was, okay, that makes sense. So, right. I just, uh, when I got it twice, I just assumed you start with the Miranda. Um, so you do, you do, I guess I should say, before we go too much farther. No, there's some guys in the chat room saying Soyuz. It's not Soyuz. Soyuz is basically, it looks like a Miranda. This new one is is the beefed up, bulky, armored looking one that you've seen in some screenshots. I think it's a cryptic original. I would say my first, uh, before we go on much farther, because I want to kind of get into the ships a little bit, my first hands-on impression with Star Trek Online was um, uh, kind of, <clears throat> kind of um, mind-blowing in a way, because it's, it's starting to become real in a way, and it's something that like I've just kind of almost written off, and now it's something I could actually play and mm-hmm. work with. And I had a blast the first, the first, even during the tutorial, I had a really good time. Now, so did I. I. I was genuinely worried that I would get in the game and not enjoy the gameplay. And so far, they've they've made some improvements that, uh, specifically with ground combat, that yeah. have really turned things around for me. Yeah. The ground. Well, let's combat, get into that. All right. So the ground. So. Just as, you know, we've talked about space a little bit, so you, you can beam down to a planet. When you beam down, as all of you know, you can choose to either take some of your bridge officers with you, which is a fantastic, we should, we'll talk a little bit about bridge char- uh, characters here in a minute, but, uh, or you can take down team members with you, and they've included now things uh, that make a little more first-person shootery in a way, but still very much Only a, in feel, only not a, in actual right, mechanic. In, in mechanic, it's still very much a role-playing game, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, you've got, you've got Crouch, which come, which brings the camera down over your shoulder and yeah. you kind of get in a little closer on somebody. Yeah, um, it almost feels a little mass effecty. And they and they call that aim mode. Or mm-hmm. Not crouch. They call that aim mode, which which also means you're aiming a little better, so you do a little more damage when you. You also shoot. take a little less damage when you're doing that and as you, well. Then they also include things like the Kirk roll and the leap and things like that, so you can yeah. you can leap and roll and dodge. It really which, gives ground combat a, a kind of an epic feel, and it also um, allows it to feel better the better you are. And it lets you plan because I know, okay, if I've got a group of guys here and say I'm soloing and I know that maybe if I just went head to head with them, I, it might mm-hmm. be too many. Right. But because you uh, can protect yourself with objects in the environment like rocks or buildings, I can I can pull a guy and then run behind a building uh-huh. and generally everybody will come with him. But if I'm getting shot at from like everyone in the group, only Your the guys- Your shots go down pretty fast. Yeah. But if I run behind a building or a rock, only the guys that are in my line of sight in firing range will be able to get me. So I, it's, a, right. it's a good way to kind of- be strategic when you're doing ground combat, mm-hmm. and the same applies in space combat. You can fly behind an asteroid, and if you're quick enough, you can you can un, you can lose a guy for a minute, but he'll you know obviously pursue. Right, and um, uh, to be honest, the ship AI, enemy um, space AI, is fantastic. Like, uh, well, I don't want to go too far mm-hmm. into it, but I have been outclassed by even like even level uh, AIs. Hmm. that just start doing amazing things like if i if i rip down their right their uh, starboard shield all of a sudden they'll they'll turn their entire tactic to the port side so i have to start over from scratch on a new shield really? front yeah i guess i haven't really i guess i really haven't paid much attention to it because it's worked well enough for me that i guess i probably would have only noticed if it was if they were being really obnoxious it's kind of obnoxious sometimes. <laughs> well, but you know what I mean? But like, at the same time, it also helps you... Um, well, and I would say this, too, is that uh, I would say the AI for your away team is is pretty darn good now. It's during our beta testing. There's been there's been a few bugs that they've worked out with the ground with the uh, with your team members, your bridge officers, you bring down. Mm-hmm. Um, but overall, I pretty much have been able to rely on them. And yeah, and one of the things they've recently added is you can actually, when you're in ground combat in the right scenario, it's not always an option. I don't know what conditions it needs to be an option, but you can pause. All that, yeah. So you basically are freezing the game for a second, and you issue commands to your bridge officers, and then you can resume the game, and you can only pause for a few seconds. Uh huh. So you I think can, it's a, a 45 second max like yep. per map. Yep. So if you pause it for three seconds, you're down to 42 yep. for the rest. And I think that's a nice way to be able to issue commands because mm-hmm. there's different, different uh, like you would expect, you know, patrol, attack, defend, regroup, things right. like that. And sometimes, I mean, your AI is pretty reliable, your, your bridge officers, but sometimes they make some dumb decisions or they get stuck on rocks. And, and I've stuff had a like problem that. where we kind of just got separated and yeah. um, I just tapped on pause real quick, clicked regroup, unpaused, and they all came back to me, right. and then we were able to move forward as a group. It's really handy to, to be able to take care of those things instead of also having to uh, to worry about incoming fire and, and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. the pause function is going to be really handy. And we've, I think that the situation that it comes up is that it's only solo play. I think. I, I haven't really tested oh, it thoroughly enough to, you, to make you can't sure. Oh, that would make sense, because you can't really issue orders to, in a, to other co-players. Anyways. Well, and in a sense, I mean, even if it was just you and one other captain and three AI... 
it would be handy to be able to pause, but what if that one other guy you're with is kind of a jerk and just keeps yeah. pausing for the hell of it? Yeah. That would be so annoying. Um, now, do you want to talk at all about uh, the flank damage and uh, how that kind of works in ground combat? I think that's been pretty well discussed all, already, so but that's another good uh, thing to do with the pause command. If you wanted to gain more flanking damage, you could hit pause real quick and tell your people to run to the other side of the yeah. battle and then unpause, and then you would be Essentially, able to... Essentially, if you get the surprise, if you, if you surprise the guy you're fighting... Um, or he surprises you. There's uh, you get additional damage, right? Uh, for flanking, which uh, is again, it just makes ground combat so much more. I sneak up on people all the time because fun and uh, uh, tactical. A, I want that flank damage. So yeah, I'll, I'll plan for. It's a pretty significant bonus to your yeah. to your outgoing damage. Yeah. Um. All right. So ground combat is is um is that one of the things that I'm going to mention? They took it out of beta, but there is a non combat episode you go on where you go to a planet who's having um issues with their with their mind. This miners. is actually um. Right after you finish the tutorial, you go visit an admiral on Starbase, uh, Earth Starbase, and this is the first mission he gives you. Yep. Or I think it's still in, but they changed the whole oh. the whole dialogue. <clears throat> so we should mention. Um, so yeah, initially after the tutorial, you you're on Starbase, and you can do things like customize your ship appearance, uh-huh. customize your uniform. Mm-hmm. Again, not that you when you, you could do your uniform when you created the character, but this gives you a second chance. Well, it also gives you a chance to customize your bridge officer's uniforms, right? If you, you get, have the money for it, you get uh, you get to recustomize your uniform and your own ship for free the first time. Right. Um, the first time you go into to either of those, if you make any changes, they're free. Yeah. Now, uh, but not for the bridge officers. The bridge officers are always pay. Going no, I think they still have oh, one do? time that you oh, okay. get it free. Maybe I did just... Okay. That could be a bug. Um, Who now, knows? Uh, so one of the first missions you go on is you report to a planet <coughs> and uh, the, you have a bunch of miners on the planet and they're not producing um, the way they should be and you're right. kind of sent there to sort of arbitrate the dispute and figure out what's going yeah. on because they provide a, an important supply for the Federation. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is a non-combat mission. You beam down and you talk to the uh, leader of the mining organization and then your mission is to go around and talk to the different NPCs and figure out what their grievances are and then go back to him and, and essentially get quizzed on what the grievances are. Right. Uh, and they do it for, fairly early on in the game after the tutorial, so you're still kind of getting, you're, at that point, you're still kind of getting the mechanics of, of ground and, and uh-huh. communication. Uh, one of the things they took out, uh, probably because they just couldn't figure out a way to work it into the game very well, is when you're talking to one of the miners, you can bring one bridge officer crew member down with you because the, uh, the owner of the facility said, I only want you and one other person to come down. So you don't have, right. your, whole, you don't have your whole bridge officer crew with you. You don't beam down with an army. So uh, you talk to one of the guys, and then your, your bridge officer says, Sir, you know, I've noticed uh, the uh, members of the uh, mining facility here, their names happen to correspond to names in a original series episode, the uh, one that the started Horta. the Horta episode. And it kind of they give you mm-hmm. like a little bit of a uh, nod. And then, so then once they did that, I was looking for that. Uh huh. And I noticed that there's names, there's references, yep. there's locations mm-hmm. v- everywhere throughout the game that are it's nods a- and, and references to every, uh, every series of Now, Star they Trek. did remove that dialogue because, yep. again, they couldn't find a way yep. to, to make it fit in with the game world. But now that I you like know, that. when you run that mission, uh, if, you, if you're a real big fan of the Horda episode, yep. you'll recognize names, you'll recognize situations. It's uh-huh. really cool. Yeah. It's not only cool that that was put into the game, but it was put in deliberately as a nod yeah. to the original canon. Now, let's, uh, so one of the things that you have to kind of do in, in, in a Star Trek spa- or any space game is the mechanic of having to return back to your home base to turn in the quest yeah. every time or episode would right. be very tedious. So what they've allowed you to do is... Especially once, because space is big. Yeah. Once you're back on your ship, you can just hail Starfleet from anywhere you're at in space yeah. and turn in the mission. And mm-hmm. if they have something new, get a new mission, collect your reward and all that stuff. So that really lets you just kind of keep on cranking because you don't have to do that long trek back to wherever you right. originally got assigned that episode. However, um, there is an ability to return to Earth Starbase they called added a, a that. transwarp conduit or something tra- like that. And, and it has a cooldown, so you can only yeah, use it Yeah, it's like so 30 often. minutes, I think. It's a lot like the Hearthstone, in, right? That's what they call yeah. it in World of Warcraft? Hearthstone. Hearthstone. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know, but in World of Warcraft, you could set it to wherever your kind of home base was. You'd go to an inn and check in. Right. I, as far as I know, so far, it's only Starbase 1. Yeah, it seems to be. Maybe they'll change that i mean Maybe. it's a work in progress clearly yeah. it, it has the wrong icon it works though i mean <laughs> it, it does it does what you need like if i'm somewhere i just like you know what i don't need to be here uh i i tap that button and then um yeah. you know i'm back at starbase one and then i i you sure uh, are i exit out mm-hmm. so uh, i like that they really added the hail starfleet thing because i was one thing i was worried about was that just that really annoying travel across right space. i finally completed my episode now i have to fly across the entire sector now okay <laughs> before we go any further is there anything in this kind of initial early phase that you want to talk about let me look at my notes. Okay. One thing I'll mention, too, is uh, you, uh, you start to get little... Oh, I do want to say something. All right. Earth Starbase is 
awesome. It's so much fun um, for fans of the actual show because you can fly through the shipyards. Oh, when yeah. When you first get there, right at the tail end of the tutorial after the EMH says, well, it was great knowing you. Yeah. Um, you can fly over to the shipyards at that Earth space dock and check out all of the ships in the entire game are all docked there. Yeah. Uh, some of them are clipping into each other needing to fix that, but <laughs> you can even see the... Uh, That's just because your resolution's low, Jeremy. On my high resolution, they're not clipping. That's not true. <laughs> no, it's not true. Uh, <laughs> oh, we should mention, too, that, you know, uh, so far in the gameplay that we've covered, um, there's been no Leonard Nimoy voiceover as of yet. No, that's true. So we haven't heard any of that stuff. Right. Um, now, one thing I wanted to mention is you start out with kind of a low ship, but even with that low ship, you can continually upgrade the equipment on it, mm -hmm. and you can actually get some pretty powerful engines and weapons and things like that. Yeah, I'm wondering if some of the higher-end gear is actually limited by either ship rank or captain oh, uh, oh, rank. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I haven't encountered oh, it yet, I, I personally. Have, so. I have uh, phasers that I can't equip right now. Ah, so, and um, it, do you know if it's ship rank or is it captain rank? It's, no, it's my personal rank. It's my your captain rank. So you need to be a, a commander. I was or just talking to, with somebody today who's who is a high level ranking officer and has been uh -huh. able to go back and re-equip his Miranda with all of, like the. Oh, more, so now he's got a beefy Miranda. It still doesn't, you know, still doesn't really compare to a beefy cruiser. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's got, yeah, essentially a tricked out. He pimped his ride. He pimped his Miranda. <laughs> is what he did. And uh, he, you know, if he wanted to, he said what he did is he he loaded it with uh, Mark III phasers and really nice engines and really nice torpedoes, and he'll jump into PvP. Oh, and get underestimated. And get underestimated. And, that, and then, but he says that's kind of clever. He says what the problem is is once they're on to him, they're on to him, and the gig's up right then and there. And you know, it's like okay, it only works for the surprise. Do you want to talk factor. a little bit about our, our impressions of PvP so far? Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, now we've only gotten like basically one day of PvP. Mm -hmm. um, I did though the last time I played I almost did it just almost all PvP really so, so it, yeah, yeah and you're not a big PvP guy I am now it's that fun huh? I've never uh, I've done a little PvP in World of Warcraft I've never done PvP in champions um, but uh, you know uh, everybody that we were playing with uh, on Ventrilo who's also in the closed beta we mm -hmm. just kept saying guys you got to check out PvP it's it's a great way to get XP it's really rewarding yeah and uh, and so I thought all but right but it's also just fun it's a lot of fun it's uh, kind you, of frenetic <laughs> It's, you know, you join fast that paced. you join that PVP queue, uh -huh. and then uh, once a, once you're once you're up with slots up wherever you're at, it you can you can auto join the PVP mm -hmm. game. You're there with a with a, it's you know red versus blue, right? And um, either way, win or now, lose. Have you, have you encountered XP? Have you encountered any Fed versus Fed battles? Because I, yeah. I didn't personally. Yeah, I you did. did? Uh, well, it was actually it was just the way the balancing worked out is I think it was a Fed on the Klingon side or something like that. Oh, weird. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried to shoot him and it wasn't, you know, couldn't target him. And it, you know, or it, I tried to not shoot him and he shot me and it was... Oh, don't go to sleep. My Mac just went to sleep. You can there hit the little uh, coffee cup icon up there. Um, I don't know how to use these. I know. It's right next to the queue. That? So uh, the PvP system works is extremely cool. fun to play. I, I did not as much enjoy the ship PvP, but to be fair, I didn't play it that much. I had a ton of... I did PvP You know, I only missions. went into two different maps, and right now they've, they've already acknowledged that this is a bug. Um, higher level um, Klingon players, I don't know if it works for higher level feds, but they're able to join um, tier one maps oh and clean up <laughs> yes yeah there was uh a probably They're like a lieutenant commander uh, equivalent on the klingon side yeah just gunned right for me and ripped well, there's, me they're supposed apart. to be balanced they're, supposed to they're be. not really so balanced every now and then what but are you doing? i'm moving you away a little bit because you're a little loud oh really you're kind of a loud guy um now i the, keep going uh, closer to it every the, time you the pvp <laughs> missions are uh our maps i should say are really really well done and they're fun and complex and detailed. Yeah, that same they're one. They're not that I just throwaway extra maps. They're really good maps. That same one that I did, where I just get kept getting ripped apart, was was really cool. Um, when I died and had to look at my flaming ship there, it's floating in space. I got to look at the rest of the map as well. It was a a land grab basically, where you had to go to these specific locations and mm -hmm. then stay there to to gather points. Yeah, I, yeah. I guess they're similar um, to some of the. PvP battlegrounds I've seen in World of, World of Warcraft. Well, it's as a little. Well. It has hints of capture the flag from a first person shooter in it. You know, yeah. you have a you have your base, and uh, you you all you defend that base so someone can't can't come and take your flag. Which to that end, I seriously could see you and a few guys coming over here and doing a private PvP instance. Yeah, and doing essentially a land party in Star Trek Online. And they've already said that that's going to be possible. And the XP that we would accumulate in that land party would help us later on in the game because you're playing that character. You're leveling yeah, up your Yeah, they're calling character. that war games, which I, is basically on the Federation side, it's called an equivalent of basically like a, kind of like a um, uh, holodeck where you just go and train. I love it. On the Klingon side, it's called house versus house battles, um, which is basically the same thing. You train, but you kill each I, other. I literally <laughs> have almost no complaints with PvP 
the caveat to that is, is you do, um, y you do get at this point. Now I have a strong suspicion this will be rebalanced, but at this point you get a lot more XP for a PVP mission than you do for a typical episode that you'll play out in space and beam down to a planet. Right. Well, that that's a a double-edged thing. One is that they probably want to actually reward people for, for playing doing PVP. Yeah, because you want to bring people in. Cause right. I, you know what? And, and you to know, your point, I would not have played unless the guys in Vent hadn't said, you're going to get a lot of XP for it. Yeah. Because I, for me, I was like, yeah. And on the other side of things, I give you just a, a little bit of an insight into the beta. They've already acknowledged that some of the other missions, um, the PVE missions on the Fed side, are just too long. They're not balanced properly. So either there's bugs preventing people from uh, completing them in a timely manner, or they're just they're, well, they just weren't created correctly. They've already see, acknowledged so I many disagree. of those. I disagree. I disagree because I think we uh, are under a certain level of pressure at this during the beta cycle to advance, advance, advance because we want right. we want to test, we want to get to the next spot, and as reviewers, we <laughs> want to be able to see the content so we can talk about it. So we feel like this big pressure to keep moving forward. And so when these missions take 20, 30 minutes, forty minutes, mm -hmm. an hour, you're like. Oh man, no, I haven't played anything as long as an hour. But if they're just you're like this is taking forever. But I think in, I have in real in 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 reality when the game's out, I I don't want it to go through it too fast. I no, want it to take a I. long time. So when I'm no longer in beta, I don't want them to speed up the the missions because I'm in this game to play the game and experience it. And I'm okay but at with the same it time, a long time. There is a pretty obvious. Um, there's an imbalance. PVP has an imbalance. P PVP gets a lot more XP for time. But per you, time. But yeah. Yeah, no, I, oh, well, yeah, absolutely. For so they've got, yeah, they've yeah. got to try to find a way to, to balance that out while still keeping it rewarding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hopefully they will. I'm sure they will because it's already been an acknowledged issue. I'm hopeful they don't bring down the XP you gain from PvP. I'm more hopeful they just kind of up what you get for some, from some of the longer episodes. Yeah, that could or, be. Or, you know, if there's an episode where you have to kill 15 Klingon ships and beam down to a planet and do something and beam back up and uh -huh. versus an episode where you just do five things and you're done. Yeah. You know, they sometimes will have equivalent level of XP or around there. That should probably be short up a little bit. Why don't we go ahead and just summarize our overall, our overall impressions of Stowe this far in. It's a lot better than I was expecting. Um, I, and you had high expectations. I didn't, I didn't say this on the, on, on the main show <laughs> and I haven't said it until now because I don't want to come by. I want to come across as a fanboy because sometimes I get, you know, really excited about this stuff. Yeah. But uh, there was a week, uh, was it two weekends ago now, where they did the 24-7 access to beta play? Right. And right. I, that was some of the most fun I have had in years. Um, one of the best weekends I've had in years, just being able to play the game, a combination with the cool guys on, on Ventrilo, so we have, right. you know, being able oh, to actually, have that I wanna, voice I want to talk a little bit about group dynamics and, then, and our impressions of and, that. And still. then, you know, just the... the Every time I advanced further, there was more one more thing that it was just very you know uh, nod to the Star Trek fans that made me smile. But at the same time, um, I I find that it's actually a pretty rewarding plot line of the game. Yeah, and um, I'm actually enjoying it, almost like I would be enjoying a good Star Trek book in a way. And that's okay. That's not something I didn't give a rat's butt about the World of Warcraft storyline. Or the champion. I don't even. I don't even know what what the champion story. I've been playing champions for four months. I don't even know what the storyline is. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. And um, me neither. And <laughs> but I know there are several, but I don't know that any of them would be called the story. And because I'm not a big MMO game player, the vernacular in Star Trek, calling things Lieutenant, calling things a Miranda or a, a Phaser. Uh, Mark II, mm -hmm. um, these kinds of things, I immediately was able to recognize these objects in this world and I knew what to do. Whereas with Champions, a little bit, but more with World of Warcraft, there's a learning curve to even... I didn't... When I started playing those games, I didn't know what uh, crafting was. I didn't... I started playing World of Warcraft, I didn't know I needed to pick a skill like leather making. I had right. no idea. That was just something... So it was a total vernacular and, and way of saying things and, and doing things I didn't, didn't know anything about. I'm able to take you know my experience in Star Trek and bring it into this game and I'm able to sort of hit the ground running that was very, very nice for me because otherwise it's it's kind of a big overhead and a big drag on a game. So you think that uh, just, we've talked about this, actually we talked about this in the next episode that you'll see of this, is the, the kind of disparity between MMO players and Star Trek fans. And you think that, excuse me, oh, your, your experience as a Star Trek fan has actually prepared you for this MMO in a way? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um the uh, the core gameplay is still very much a role playing game, so you have to have you know uh, either the willingness to learn or some experience there. But just as far as being able to kind of you know um, 
I, in Champions, there's places you have to go, which I didn't know. I didn't know what that place was. I know what a starbase is. Oh yeah. I I know uh, what trans warp is. Right. Um, but you, the word powerhouse is just not in your vernacular. I don't. I didn't know what a powerhouse was. I immediately figured it out. Yeah. But at first, it's like you know, I didn't know I needed to go to a powerhouse and 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 train up. Right. Um. But if I'm supposed to report to the admiral's office for an assignment, well, I can. You know, I think anybody can figure that out. Yeah. So, all right. Um, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about group mechanics before okay. we go into our Q&A. Right. And uh, there's been a lot of people wondering about how different classes work and everything like this. Um, during that same 24-7 play, uh, we had a full team, a full five-man team of Jupiter Force. It, guys, you guys are awesome, by the way. That was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. that we're able to go through a number of missions and really... Um, try to experience things from a different point of view because some of those guys were a higher rank and had like one had a science ship and one had a cruiser and the rest of us were in our light cruiser still, our Miranda types. And uh, so we could really experience a little bit of what each class plays like yeah. and how it feels in a group. And what it, what I think it really boils down to is no matter what ship you choose, no matter what career path you choose, uh -huh. you're still a captain. You still have the potential of being Kirk or Cisco or Janeway. You, you are awesome. And I think that uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you're still a standalone captain. You're never going to be gimped because you be chose, you know, a science w well, class and, with a bunch and, of. Um, and to that point, buffs and debuffs. I, and so things. in the game, there's been a trailer. You, everybody out there has probably read about or heard about it through our show. Mm -hmm. There's a game. There's a game map area called Starbase 24. Yeah. That is essentially anytime you feel like doing a little space combat. It's open. It's a, there's a Klingon attack. This has been mentioned before. It's the very first fleet action that you will encounter. And actually, this is really cool. The fleet actions uh, are basically like open missions that can support many, many people. I think that I, at one point in Starbase 24, I saw at least 30 people. Mm -hmm. And it was probably balanced for more because well, even that was hard. But you also encounter that within like three hours of gameplay. They, and the, and they you really hit the ground running. They scale the Starbase. So I entered Starbase 24 as an engine. Uh, my class was an engineer. Mm -hmm. um, and I entered Starbase 24 space by myself. And the game scales the combat to that so that I was able to fight my way through the Klingon front. And then I was able to approach Starbase 24, mm -hmm. beam down, and then I went into a ground combat mission where I had to get all of the Klingons off the, off the Starbase. And rescue some rescue scientists some or something scientists, like that. And then beam out of there. And then I had to fight my way back out of Starbase 24. Right. Now, the ship's fine while I'm down on the Starbase. Mm -hmm. It's actually a space station, but they call it a Starbase. Um, and then, Quibbler. Um, <laughs> then I had to fight my way out all solo. I went back later on after my next character <coughs> because you can always go there and fight or the first time you go there it's actually part of a, of a mission. Mm -hmm. um, later on I went back there as part of a fleet action and it was just a whole new level of fun. Yeah, with more ships and more explosions and more epicness and we to it. We fought we fought um, some, some fleet action. We did some fleet actions where I was very, very um, uh, below everybody else that was playing because I, you know, they had some of these people for the 24 seven play played nearly 24 yeah. <laughs> seven. I did not. I had podcasts to do. And um, <laughs> so I was, I was behind as far as my rank went and uh, I was able to, I don't know what the official term is in Star Trek online, but I was able to sidekick up to their level. Right. So I, uh, so uh, temporarily, as long as I was in range, I was fighting at the, one of my team members levels, whoever you set to be the uh, sort of the champion of your team. And uh, I'm able to play those missions with them. Now, the downside was is if you went more than a few kilometers apart, I would immediately, well, not immediately, actually. Right. I, I think I have like 50 seconds to get back into range. Yeah. But uh, if you separate, you have 50 seconds to get back into range or else you decide kick, and then I'm back fighting at my normal level. Right, I, so you suddenly go from like level 18 down to 8. Yeah, I, I got <laughs> beat up. And... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so that just takes a little more coordination to not not to get far away from but the person. But sidekicking side is, is a great mechanic for MMOs. I don't care if it's not exactly canon, every every or MMO not exactly realistic, needs to have it. but it allows friends to play with friends no matter what's going on. Yeah, and it's it's just awesome. Yeah, it's, it needs to be in every MMO from from now on. Yeah, um, it works a little better in Champions on the ground because it's much harder to get apart from each other. Mm -hmm. It can still happen right. in space. You know, it's much easier. If someone hits their, their maneuvering thrusters and, and pumps up their uh, impulse yep. to full, uh, they can shoot out of range really quickly. And if I don't catch up to them, and if I'm in a situation like a combat situation, I probably can't catch I'm up. I'm really them. hoping that that's still a work in progress and they're going to increase the range a bit because it is very limiting right now. It is. It's almost yeah. like you got to keep them on auto follow just to stay in. But there's not an auto follow. Oh, yeah. There's, there's no auto follow <laughs> functionality in space. So otherwise I would have, but I, I couldn't do that. So I ended up you know, just kind of having to get blown up a few times, but yeah. it was still fun. All right. So it was fun. Now, uh, moving forward, do we, do we have anything else before we want to go to the Q and a, I think we should go ahead and jump into it. Cause we're already like 20 minutes in. All right. All right. Well, if anybody, yeah. anybody watching wants to call in, you can Skype us at Jupiter broadcasting. Why don't you punch up the, 
the thing there. Ta-da! And um, oh, we got our first Roger Rabbit is calling. Wait, that didn't work. Hey, Roger, can you hear us? Hey, hello. Dude. Hey there. I can hear you too. Oh, it must not be yes. the active window. That's what it is. Did so what's your question? Um, I forgot the several, but let's keep that first one of the navigation. How do you navigate in space a bit on the overall? Go, you go, do you go to system to system, or how are you going about? Okay. So um, there's the question, how do you move from system to system? Yeah, yes, uh, what's like the navigation? To Earth to beta set, for example. Gotcha. Right. Um, well, there's a, uh, it's been called astrometrics view or sector space, which is basically, a, you want to go hang up on him now that we'll All right, answer we'll, the question? We'll hang up on you because we're getting a little noise, but you can hear it on the stream. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the question. So um, the sector space view is something we've talked about. We, we're, we're actually, we're talking a lot about it in the next episode of Stoke that's coming out. Yeah. We're recording these a little out of order. Uh, that one's already been recorded. Um, and sector space is, is just really awesome. It's an abstract view of your traveling, and it lays mm -hmm. out all the systems for you. And you kind of just, you can choose from a system list, or you can just kind of point and go. In right, a you can direction. set it up to autopilot to the system that you need to get to, um, mm -hmm. or you can just fly manual. And then, so sector space is kind of a square grid. Yeah. And then at the edges of the square grid are the other, or are the other systems, like the regular system and the Klingon sector mm -hmm. and all these different things. So you fly to that border, and then you enter that sector space, and now you're flying through their sector space, and then you go up to the planet you want. You can drop out of warp. Right. All right, so next call, if anybody wants to call in, we'll take uh, your question, and um, then we'll get you on the air. Um, one more comment to make about sector space is I've, I, I talk, and I, I'm repeating myself a little bit from the previous episode, but I really like the music and sound effects they did. Yeah. All right, we've got James online. James, can you hear us? Hi. Are you there, James? James Hamblin. Hello. Hello. Hey. Um, oh, I'm a big fan of Stoked, by the way. Thank hey, you. you so am I. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, just a question about um, locations, um, like the famous Star Trek locations, like Deep Space Nine and the Badlands and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and and uh, you know Earth as well. You know, can you go onto Earth and actually walk around Starfleet Command and stuff like that? But mainly, like you know, the big Star Trek locations. Okay. How many of those are in the game? And well, I'm going to actually kind of skirt there? around this a little bit by answering because um, we've already been told that those will be in the game. Not many of them are. So Deep Space Nine is. Deep Space Nine is, but uh, the day that they rolled it out in beta, they told us not to go there because you can't leave. But you can go there now. <laughs> yeah, you, I think you can. And, no, oh, I've been there. And yeah. it's, 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 it's Deep Space Nine. I, I ran around the promenade. I went in And there's far. also been, there's been some footage put up on YouTube recently by, some, by another podcast that has uh, Deep Space Nine. If you're really um, mm -hmm. jonesing for seeing that. At the time we cool. played, you couldn't beam down to Earth. Earth is there, though. Yeah. Um, oh, 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 oh. What? Um... Space Station K7. Oh, yeah, that's there. That's Ooh. there. Um, that's from the Tribbles episode. of The, the Trouble with Star. Tribbles, nice. for, and it's, it's cool. It's, yeah. it's, it, it, we couldn't play there much because they're still working on it, um, but you know, just to drop out of warp, and it does the beauty shot, and then it goes in, and there's Space Station K7, and it's, it's beautiful glory. It's been modernized on the inside, but it's still the same basic structure, and, yeah. and it's near Sherman's planet, just like it was in the right. original series. Yep. It's, it's very cool. It is cool. So that's a, that's a great question, James. Thanks for calling. We're hoping that they'll oh, add right. more cool, of those. Thanks. All right, so now we've got locations. the Snyders. The Snyders, can you hear us? You might have to mute your stream first. That's hey, one thing to mention, guys. everybody. Hey there, what's your question? That, I'm doing that right now. Good man. Um, I actually have a question about uh, ships. Uh, if I'm able, are you able to buy ships when you rank up, uh, or uh, are they given to you, or do you have to purchase them? I think I'm the only one of the two of us that's actually gotten that high, yeah. and just barely. I think I, I ranked up <laughs> right before the last beta window was over, and um, you're given one ship. You're given actually a mission that the reward for that mission is your a, new ship. A new ship. So you yeah. start out with a basic ship, and then you get one more ship. Is that but what really, um, since every ship within a class and within a, uh, a classification, like either escort, cruiser, or science, is fully customizable with all of the other classes that are there, you don't have uh -huh. to choose, I want a Nova or whatever. You just choose, I want a science ship, and then you go and customize it. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. You and, can uh, buy ships down the road, but it, 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 it the, the dollar amount would, is so astronomical that yeah. it would take a long time to get there. It costs okay, merit, they, and right now... they have that turned up during the beta process? Yeah, we're not sure. We haven't been able to get any um, clear answers on that. 
But you're given uh, okay. one free ship, so you know, don't be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And were you able to visit Memory Alpha? Because that's the big thing, crafting. Yeah, it's in there, but I think it was also bugging out. I didn't personally visit, but I've seen some shots of people no, that I, went to the I, system. Yeah, I've seen. I've heard of people going there. I haven't had a chance to go to Memory Alpha yet myself, but it's, it's like the next destination on my list. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Well, guys, you've answered my questions. Great podcast. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm speaking with a lot of friends of mine. We really enjoy your show, and hopefully, we'll be able to join your Jupiter fleet when y'all Jupiter do ramp Force. Up. You bet, buddy. Thanks Jupiter for Force. calling in. <laughs> Thanks Have very much. Guys. Thanks. All right, Joel's I'm gonna calling take a, in. Actually, I'm going to take a couple quick calls, uh, oh, questions from the chat. All right. Room. Well, um, somebody asked us Wolf three five nine is among the uh, mm-hmm. famous landmarks, and yep. yes, the system is there. At this time, there was nothing there. Yep. Uh, it's right next to Earth, as you would expect. Yeah, the Briar Patch is in there. I've seen that. Mm-hmm. So a, a lot of the iconic locations from the Star Trek oh, universe absolutely. are absolutely yeah. going to be there. All right, we've got Joel on the line. What's going on, Joel? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, we yes. can hear you. Okay, hold on. i got to meet you guys this thing. Good man. You better. It's a good tip uh, for everybody question, calling in. Uh, my question is basically this. Uh, it's about Klingons. I don't know how much you've played Klingons. I know you have played Very little, but we'll try to help. Um, I'm in a Klingon fleet right now. Mm-hmm. I'm curious uh, what your thoughts are as far as... Uh, the PvP ability of Klingons compared to Federation. Federation as far as ships, like a balance, do you think the Federation ships are going to be better in PvP at late game, or if Klingon ships are going to be better in PvP? Well, uh, late game is hard to tell, but um, as far as a bird of prey, that's all that I've had a chance to play with. I, uh, the bird of prey really feels very powerful, especially compared to a Miranda um, light cruiser. Well, type. and we know that there's going to be some later on in Klingon play. There's going to be some. Big ships that can that can as it can release smaller birds of prey, yeah. as like a, as an ability. Right, and that could be really crazy. And not I only mean, that, but they also mentioned recently that that carrier can also um, customize those shuttles as like weapon pods, basically, and you know change it so they're not just launching fighters. They can also use repair shuttles and and things like that. I mean, it sounds it seems like from what I'm hearing, having not played Klingon gameplay and. Uh, but, I mean, it seems like the Klingon ships are, are, you know, out of the gate, definitely have some very nice abilities that the Federation ships match in some ways, but in other ways the Klingons have a leg up already. So I got only imagine down the road. As you like get cloaking? Farther, cloaking. And pretty awesome. Ability. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think the Klingons will have a pretty good advantage, but that said, the Federation ships, the Klingons are like, um, you know, they're all one po- purpose focused. And then the Federation mm-hmm. ships are much more well balanced. And so it, there's, there's not like it's, it's, it's not like it's end game for the feds because there's still uh, ways that, that they can still combat And you know, it, it, it's an MMO. All of the balancing is going to change. So any comments we make right now are just basically mm-hmm. going to be blown out of the window yeah. in three months. Gameplay may change while online. It will change. I guarantee it. All and right. everybody on, on both sides is going to be calling for nerfs of specific powers and all that. So. All right, Joel. Well, thanks for the call, man. Sure. Bye. All right. All right, we have got, I have no idea. How Other, do you say this name? With letters, Cypher Totsy. Cypher Totsy, you're on the line. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. What's going on? What's your question? My question was, uh, last last episode you had Daniel Stahl on. Yeah. Or episode two. He mentioned um, advanced interface UI settings to be able to set your own presets for powers. Mm-hmm. Have you guys had a chance to play with that? or? Yeah, basically every ship comes with a, a base amount of power units. The light cruiser starts with 200 units split over four different settings. So um, like speed, weapons, um, yeah, defense, and, shields. And you can set how much energy is in each of those. And I, I get the impression that higher classes of ship have more energy in specific locations. So we can set our own presets for artillery you can. and firepower. And right? depending on the view, you can also lock a preset, which I just learned about this just recently. You can lock it so that... Um, Regardless of your other presets, you can always say, keep my shield power at this level. Right. So then the other ones will adjust accordingly. So you, you might yeah. sacrifice a little bit from your impulse engines, but you can always say, regardless of what I, how I adjust, I, I got to have my shields at this point, which is very cool. Right. And, and that power level is such an integral part of the game. Right. So, Fantastic. And you Thank know you that's going to change when you're in a group because sometimes you might have... Uh, <sighs> You might be able to make sure that somebody's drawing all the power, so right. you don't need any shields. Right. Yep. You might. Yeah. In fact, during one of the fleet actions, uh, I put all my energy into into my into my weapons because every, other people were drawing were drawing all over the fire, so their shields were taking the hits, and I went out and destroyed mines. Yeah. So I needed to be able to clear the minefield as fast as possible. Right. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. All right, we've got Raymond on the line here. Raymond, thanks for calling in. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can. So, what's your question? Um. What kind of different uniforms are there in the game? Oh, and good question. Badges? Well, there's no bikinis, sadly. No, no, no bikinis yet. They're all kind of, you know, if you've seen the screenshots, they're all kind of generally like that. Um, 
there's a lot of color customizations and there, there like five yeah. basic Starfleet uniforms is that what it is no I think there's actually ten that oh, you start that? off okay. with and that's wow. you, when you first start you have access to tier zero and tier one uniforms that's what they're called um, but oh. I, I'm not clear if you have access to more as you rank up and then I I've, I've seen them with those I, names if you would but I've seen the Vulcan badge I've seen a, a science badge and I've seen a Federation badge a Starfleet badge oh yeah interesting so I know there's at least those three badges. Yeah. Um, and but th- basically all of the Starfleet uniforms are long sleeve shirts with different kinds of collars and, and, and but you uh, can, setups. But you can stuff. do one of the things Jeremy did, which was really cool, is he kind of came, came up with a standard color scheme for himself and uh, all his officers. So he had a right. kind of a customized uniform with a, with, a, with a really nice looking, sort of an homage to the motion picture movie It had uh, a lot uniform. of white in it. Yeah. Or actually it was just a very light gray. Yeah. <laughs> so can you make a pure black one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you can. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Cool. It'd be a little shiny. The blacks tend to be a little shiny. Yeah, all of the uniforms kind of look like they're made of like a, a, a body futuristic armor, pleather. Sort of. Yeah, kind of a pleathery. Well, and they are, they are supposed to be, they're not just like standard cloth. They're supposed to be, you know, um, reinforced technology. Like when you're down on a planet, you know. Yeah, that's your battle combat a, wear. It has shield generations and it's like there's other things that it's supposed to do that right. are kind of implied. So. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks, Raymond, for calling okay. in. All right, Zill's calling in. I don't know if that's really his name, but what's going on, Zill? Can you hear us? Hey, yeah. I was wondering if you guys could settle an argument me and my friends have been having about yes. the field points. Now, how exactly are the Walmart pre-order bonuses? And um, oh, I know there's the joint chill race that's supposed to get a bonus of skills. Mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. important are these bonuses, the skills, and how do skills work? Not so Not important. Really much. Um, they're let me, good well, to let have. me tell you this much. They're um, a nice little. They're a nice little leg up. The Walmart, I think, is 500 points, um, which. By the end of the tutorial, you have about fifteen hundred just saved up that you yeah. spend as soon as you're done with the tutorial. But like, uh, like the you know the the Atari digital download version, you get like plus ten to some things, and you they 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 they, uh, they definitely give you your stats a nice you know bump from somebody that's not. coming But I also anything. get the impression that eventually you're going to hit a cap. So all those bonuses are doing yeah. is making you hit the cap sooner. Well, and I think too that like anything that's in the pre-orders, you would be able to get in game within probably the first four or five hours of gameplay. Yeah, and with the exception of like the exclusive uh, bridge officer. <laughs> Borg and, and some of the like exclusive offers, but all of the like the stats st- changing stuff, you know, that wouldn't make or break it for me in the pre-orders because yeah. I think I could pretty quickly. Right. Now that said, maybe you know when 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 uh, the the pre-order opens up and you get the head start, maybe you want to have every advantage and everything you can get so you can get as far as possible. I don't recommend that. I would say enjoy it. You know, yeah. play, take your time. Yeah. It's not a race. But plus, I've already said this on Stoke um, previously. I really think that the Borg bridge officer is going to be the one that will last you the longest in the game because we all know bro- um, bridge officers can be trained. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It, you know, one of the things that we talked about in a previous episode was. Uh, I think it's GameStop. You get the uh, original series Enterprise yeah. and um, neat. But and and now that we know, you can go back and when you rank up your captain, you can go back and apply weapons, uh, higher grade weapons to lower grade yeah. ships. So that could be cool. You know, you could really then you really can have a beefy county. But at the same time, um, the bridge officer, I'm going to skill up uh, as as the entire game plays. I two years down the road, I might still have that bridge officer. Yeah, so especially if especially two years down the road, if yeah. you've already invested that much time in her. Him, so her? these bonuses of skills are just going to get you to that rank faster and not necessarily have you more skills at the end. That's how I feel about yeah, it. I, I, I agree. I can't 100% confirm, but that does seem to be the case. That's our personal opinion. Now, um, there's there's always, there's you know, it always helps to have that little extra boost. So, I mean, it's not like I'm, I'm totally going to use it. Right. You know, it's not like I'm not going to use those lever- advantages, but I'm more looking forward to the bridge officer, to be honest. Yep. Great. Thanks, guys. All right, Thank man. you. Thanks for the call. All right, so we have uh, Galaxy Navy calling in right now. Can you Somebody hear us? calls. This is awesome. Yes, I can. What's going on, man? Doing all right. So what's the question? The Thank you. I had a question about the, uh, the, the player-owned stations. I know we had a, uh, kind of some comments on that before. Are, are mm-hmm. they going to be at launch, or is that going to be down the road? Are we going to see player-owned stations in some fashion? No, those won't <sighs> be in at launch. And actually, I think right now at this point, it's becoming kind of a pipe dream. Um, yeah, and now of course now this is not official cryptic information. The, the the final answer will come from them. But one thing that is going to be in game it sounds like at launch, right, is Klingon houses. Well, those are basically fleets. Fleets, but I think you might have. It, there's been some screenshots of an actual physical building, so there might actually eventually huh. be a physical building. I don't know if that's at launch or what, or if that's 
uh, somebody on one of the news sites mislabeled it, but as right now, there's not like a, a star-based Jupiter, which would be awesome. Yeah. Even if we could just visit I Jupiter I'd Station. I'd play with you guys if you had a star-based Jupiter. I know, right? <laughs> Come hang out. That's where it'd be all fun. But I, and maybe. I mean, that seems like well, you something know, um, they could add. Cryptic's but. previous uh, title, City of Heroes, had super bases eventually added to it, and that might not have been when Cryptic was still involved, but the... The capability is, in theory, there in the engine. In some ways, I kind of look at what we've had roll out with Champions, you know, five months after its release. Uh huh. And that's, you know, they don't have anything like that in Champions. No, they don't. So uh, I don't know if I would really expect to see that. And so, you know, what our kind of out of game solution is going to be is we're going to set up like a. Uh, uh, a website for our fleet. Yeah. And then we'll kind of organize and coordinate. I think there. most fleets are probably and fleets and houses will probably yeah, do similar. With a combination a, of forums and, and Ventrilo, it's it's not so bad. Plus you can also meet up like in Sector Space or you can meet up at Starbase One or Starbase K seven. And they're pretty big areas too, so everybody yeah. can kind of coordinate in one spot. Yeah. All okay. right. Well very cool. Look forward to playing with you guys either way. You bet. Thanks, Thanks. for the call. It's Galaxy Navy there. All right, so the line's open if anybody else wants to call in. Otherwise I think we'll probably start wrapping it up because we don't want to go too long. Um, one, Let's see. What are our in-game names so folks can hook up with us if they, if they want to? Once I open think I'm beta. just I think I'm just Chris Dash Fisher, and that'll be this at name. Yep. Um, oh, we've got another call here. I'm we've at got, Bordicus, just like on the forums. Oh, sorry, Austin. Patrick just beat you out. We've got Patrick on the line. What's going on, man? What you have a question? Hey, um, I was just wondering. I had a quick question. Yeah. Shoot. Are you still there? Hello. Yeah. I oh, think. Uh, sorry, I must have a lag on my. Oh yeah, and if you're listening on the stream, there'll be a there'll be a delay on the stream too. Um, so I was wondering, you were talking about how the um, Starbase um, 24 was kind of an endless space combat kind of a scenario. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or am mm -hmm. I understanding that right? Kind of. So it's, it's uh, you, when the, the first time there is a, a storyline reason to go there. And there's an episode with an objective with uh, you know, a certain point in being there. And you, ha you have to complete that episode and, and all that. Then afterwards, uh, you can jump back in later on, at least so far in my experience, you can jump back in and you can, st you can group up again or you can just solo it if you just feel like kind of going and blowing up some Klingon uh, NPCs. It's kind of a, a pseudo um, persistent space yeah. that resets itself every once in a while so you can redo the mission objectives. Now, what's a really kind of a cool thing about Starbase 24 <coughs> is it's the reason why there's a Klingon battle there is Starbase 24 is uh, near the Kittimer planet, and the Kittimer planet is where the Kittimer Accord was signed, in, mm -hmm. in which, if people remember Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, that was sort of like the peace treaty between the Federation and the Klingons. And so it's really kind of a cool nod that Cryptic's done by making uh, a place near where the uh, uh, Kittimer Accord was signed, or this, uh, this persistent Klingon battle. Because it, it sort of represents how things have broken down between the Federation and the Klingons in this one instance right there. Yeah, and, uh, it's very story. It's also a great place if you're nearby. It's a little bit of a trek from, from Earth, but if you're nearby, it's a great way. I, I equipped my uh, Miranda with um, dual phaser beams so I could shoot two phaser arcs at once. And mm -hmm. so one of the things I did is I jumped into uh, the Starbase 24 battle and I just kind of started poking at some Klingons just to see how my new phasers worked. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. There's also some random encounters you can get into in sector space. but um, um, Well, my question was actually related to, is there something like that for ground combat? So in other words, if I want to test out one configuration for my bridge officers, run through a mission, and then switch out a few bridge officers, you know, I, or equipment, and then run through I the heard of a, of a ground um, open mission like I that. Guess but I, for, so I guess one answer would be is you could always you know, join the PvP queue. Yeah, you could. Um, but in Champions, which I wouldn't be too surprised if something like this makes its way into Star Trek Online, in Champions, when you go skill up, they have kind of like a training ground where you can go shoot at like targets and dummy objects just to kind of yeah. try out your new powers before you commit to them. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be too surprised if, if Cryptic works something in like that. Now, who knows? Maybe they won't. Maybe holodeck. Was, Good use about, for a holodeck. I mean, including the bridge officers. So I was thinking more of a PvE. Unless our bridge officers included in ground <coughs> PvP. Oh, maybe they wouldn't be. No, I, I don't. I've never, I've never taken a bridge officer in with me on PvP. It's always just been myself. Because when, right. when I, every PvP instance I've entered, there's already been uh, a whole other set of, of actual players. Uh, because it's just players yeah. and, on, my, right. on my team. But, you know, another thing that I, I actually experienced this on accident um, during one of my previous beta tests is you can um, go and repeat missions. Um, I think there's a timer. Like, a, you have to wait a certain amount of time. But if right. you just want to go and, and repeat a mission over again that had ground combat, just so you can test your br bridge mm -hmm. officers, mm -hmm. I think that seems to be it's going to be an option. Yeah. Okay, and are there missions then that only have ground combat? So, for instance, there's not a space combat. Like you were describing the uh, 
Starbase 24 again. You yeah. had to fight your way in and then beam down and then right. fight your way back out. I, I, you know, I'm not sure because, you know, we've only played so far. Yeah. But uh, I think there's uh, uh, one that wasn't combat, but when I went to the uh, mining planet and I had to figure out what was wrong with the different miners, there was no space combat involved to get to that point. I, I went directly to the planet and beamed down. Um, and I, th I think though the general recipe is, is they're trying to follow kind of a Star Trek episode esque recipe where there is some space, there, uh, some sort of encounter in space, then you beam down it, to the planet. It was very rare in any Star Trek series where it would start on the ground. Yeah, right, I understand. I mean, I mean to a degree, it's, I think that's kind of the, I think that's kind of the direction. Well, I mean, it, it is called Star Trek. But you know, you never know. Um, Not ground track. I I, I <laughs> really enjoy the ground stuff, so I'm yeah, I'm hopeful to see more and more of that. But that said, I I really enjoy the space stuff too. It, it's actually um, a lot of fun. And, and sometimes what there is is, uh, I've, in my experience so far, there's been like a light space encounter mm -hmm. where you just kind of you kind of have to get through somebody to get to the planet, and then then the bulk of the mission takes place on the planet. Right. So, all right. Well, thanks for calling in, Patrick. Thank you. All right, the Snyders is calling. He's been trying to get through, so I'm glad we got back. What's going on, man? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I'm back. Uh, I did have a uh, question for you, and I think I may have heard this later on down the road. Two okay. questions, actually. Okay. One of them, uh, does, do the Klingons have access to the uh, Genesis uh, engine like the Federation uh, later on? Well, so uh, we kind of covered a little bit of that in our interview with Daniel Stahl, and it kind of sounded like, um, in a lot of ways now, the Genesis engine is more uh, uh, of an in-house tool that what, what Cryptic does is they, they apply a set of parameters to the Genesis engine, say, generate me a map, and then a human reviews it and then publishes it. So to that end, I think a lot of content, Klingon or Federation, is Genesis-based. Now, yeah. you could always, you, if, you, if you check back in episode 15 with our interview with Daniel, he's, he goes into a little more details, but that was kind of what I gleaned from that interview. But at the same okay. time, we did have a follow-up question for him that I emailed him later and asked if the Genesis engine would be available for Klingon play, and they, his answer was basically, that's something that we might want to do. Okay. Um, okay. Or actually, I think his answer was that we intend to do that later. There you go. All right. And uh, another thing for the pre-order, uh, when you want to get the pre-order bonuses from, say, Best Buy and then Target, mm -hmm. uh, if you get both of those pre-order and you you put them on your account, you buy the the game box uh, from Best Buy. Do you only get the exclusive bonus from Best Buy and not from Target? Oh, so you mean if you bought from two locations and well, applied it, both right. codes? If it's like Champions, right. then each of those boxes, um, when you receive them, when you actually pay uh -huh. for them, will include the code. And then you you could apply that. You could you could apply, say, a Target box and a Best Buy. Right, but then that would actually mean you have to buy both versions. Yeah. You can't just pre-order and then uh, only buy one. Yeah, you know, that buddy of mine was telling me this, and uh, yeah. I yeah. wanted to, you know. But, uh, <laughs> Confirmed. You know, <laughs> but guys, again, uh, again, thanks. Uh, uh, Great playing with you guys and champions as well. You may know me. I'm Kohas. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Y'all have a good one. Thanks. Thank you, too. Nice to meet you, Kohas. All right. We have got Austin calling in now. All right, Actually, Austin. Actually, um, before we get to Austin's question, All right, hold on one second, on for Austin. a second. There was a good one asked in the chat okay. room here. All right. Um, somebody asked if we could get into a little bit of what we know about trading bridge officers between players. Oh, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, I only know very little, and this was actually just overhearing some people on Vent trying it out. And apparently... Um, I could be entirely wrong, but this is what I thought I heard. You don't actually trade them, but you have your bridge officers oh, yeah, train yeah, yeah, their yeah. bridge officers. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I have heard that. Yeah. Um, you essentially uh, you essentially send a training kit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I really like that. I really like so that. So you can't just... Uh, it's not... They've well, been comparing it to crafting, but you don't actually just create a, a, like a clone boff and send it away. Well, and, and in Star Trek, in the actual Star Trek, they wouldn't just, like, if they needed Worf to do a new thing, they wouldn't just replace Worf. They would just train Worf how to do that yeah, thing. Yeah, well, they did that. They had Riker go to and, and work on a Klingon ship for a while oh, remember, yeah, to yeah, try yeah. to train them up and, yeah. and to try to learn more about the Klingon culture. And, and then found that goop on the ship that was eating away at the hull. That's right. The Klingons the, thought the it was. goop. Yeah. All right. So uh, Austin's <laughs> been waiting. What's your question, Austin? Uh, yeah. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jeremy. Huge hey. fan of the show. Thank you. Um, so am I. But what I wanted to ask was um, like in that. sector space, from what, I, from what I've seen, it looks like uh, you pretty much have like free flight throughout the, uh, some of the different sectors. Uh -huh. But also there's, there appears to be paths going between like certain locations. Yeah, this is yeah. something I've seen a lot of people ask. Uh, yeah, this has been a really common question. But so I you're talking about those blue, almost road-looking things, right? Yeah, they're like a light blue like road that goes... Yeah. Those are 100% aesthetic. 
Yeah. They have nothing really? to do with anything. They're but, supposed to like maybe be like representative of like a of a travel route or a trading route. Yeah, and I think that the whole reason that they put them in there is because space can be kind of disorienting. It really is a and, reference uh, point. Yeah. So I think you, just like in a in a big flat zone like you might see in in Warcraft or EverQuest or something, if you see a mountain range off in a distance, you know that that's west or whatever. Well, in sector space, you can see well that's the main trade line between Earth and Vulcan, so mm. I know that's off to. It's the, a reference point, right? Yeah. I yep. think that that looks like all that they're used for, and and to be said, it works well because I wouldn't want to be like locked into just that path. Right. No, I would. I like, like being able to go direct from point A to point B, and um, uh, I think I intuitively use those as reference points without even realizing I'm doing it. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was kind of weird because I noticed also like they don't just stay like level between places; they go up and then yeah. down. Well, space right. is three That's dimensional. I don't know if you yeah. might have noticed. <laughs> it's three dimensional only. We're kind of on a three. Two, two dimensional plane of that three dimensions, <laughs> but those things are kind of all over. also one other thing is uh, as you approach a system, you know you'll see kind of like the highlight items from that system, maybe like a large planet and, a, and, a, and an asteroid cluster and things mm -hmm. like that. Those will be on different planes. Yeah, you can approach them at, at whatever plane you're Actually, at. Actually, it's kind of funny if you've seen some of the pictures of astrometrics. Some of the planets uh, they have like this uh, indicator, a, a pole that they're showing on almost, like yeah. where they actually sit on the two dimensional map. So people yeah. have been taken to calling them lollipops. Oh, it's that's cute. nice. It's nice. <laughs> um, so the the that's I'm re really glad Austin that you called in with that question because that's probably one of the number one questions we receive. So that's cool. Um, and and just one other quick thing. Uh, the when you actually get into a solar system and somebody mentioned this in chat um, earlier as I was watching it, you do only get access to one planet in that system, right? You you don't actually get the whole system. It kind of depends on the episode involved because there was one of the early missions oh. that sent you from one planet to another planet, all within and then to an asteroid belt, all within the same system. But that was just being driven by the episodic content, by the actual storyline. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, and and so far, you know, I think maybe where your question was going is so far, like, I don't know if I could just enter a system and beam down to any planet if it wasn't part of an episode. Or at least had some sort of uh, objective. I'm not positive it. about that, though. I could be wrong. Because I know there's there's been some other things. Um, actually, I am. it depends on where you're at. Because I was in a one sector where I was just needed to beam down and, and, and do different stuff at different places just to do those things. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter what planet I went to, I could beam down to that planet. So it kind of depends on where you're at in the game if it, if, if it, if it uh, allows you to or not. Okay, cool. Thanks All right, man. Well, thanks for calling. Guys. Yeah, you bet. We probably only have time for probably two more questions. All right. We're getting pretty long. One or two. If anybody calls in, we'll try to get you guys. But otherwise, we probably should wrap it up because we don't, we, we don't want to go too long. Right. Um, and, and is there anything that we've missed on your notes here? No, we, we, get got, all? we got all my notes. All right. Well, why don't we start wrapping it up? Because I think that's probably a pretty good stopping point. Um, all right. And, and I want to let people know that yeah, the, con the conversation continues. Um, we, uh, we are very happy to have the large engagement that we've had and more and more people every day over at our forums at jupitercolony.com. Yeah. You can join us. All right. All right. I'm going to let... Uh, we got one more. Chaos I'm Syndrome. I'm going to let Chaos Syndrome in, and then that'll be our last call. What's going on, man? Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so what's the question? Um, I was wondering, what do they have for weapons available in the game? Okay. So um, this will just be based on our experience so far. Which is not a whole lot of gameplay, um, relatively speaking. <laughs> but one thing that might, you might find interesting uh, as far as ground combat goes is uh, I can pick up a, uh, uh, if a, you know, when, it, when, a, when an opponent dies, depending on the way the game's worked out, you know, sometimes you can take items off the opponent. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to pick up like Klingon weapons and, and equip myself with a Klingon gun. Um, and there's like a disruptor pistol. Yeah. Or yeah. actually like I got this really crazy cool cannon gun right now. <laughs> um, and then you also starting out, you get a hand phaser and a phaser rifle at some point during early missions. That's right. And different types of bridge officers appear to have different standard issue weapons. Yep. One has a stun and another has a wide beam. Well, and that's one of the things, things you like can that. tweak too is, um, yeah, one of your bridge officers will have a gun that does the wide beam. Like maybe you saw in deep space nine when they're like flushing out the change links from, from the station. Yeah. Uh, they have a, they have a wide beam setting. So, uh, you have a couple of, those are your guns. You know, there's a wide range of guns that we haven't even seen yet. And there's some we have played with ground combat. And then in space, there's, um, you can stand out with a, just a kind of a basic standard, standard issue phaser, one beam at a time, one from the aft, one from forward. Mm -hmm. And then you can move up and you can make that more powerful or you can. Yeah, I actually found a. Dual uh, phasers. Yeah, the, the dual phaser array. That and I, you're I, equipping like not even a Federation gun right now in one of your ships. I've got disruptors because also another thing that now, your is ships that a, have. Now, is that a Klingon phaser array that you've put on your. Yeah. I noticed the beams are green. They are. They're disruptor So arrays. you've equipped your ship with a Klingon ship phaser array? Because another thing that I found was a tactical console which is another uh, like passive buff that in increased disruptor damage. So I figured 
get every inch out of my weapons that I can. And so he's able to even equip on his ship uh, 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 non-Federation equipment. I sure as heck am. Nice. <laughs> does that answer your question? Oh, uh, yes, it does. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. I'm, I'm sure Thank that you. we have not even okay. scratched the the topmost layer of the weaponry available. Oh, in no, game. no, I know, yeah. No, it just all the kind of different stuff we can do with the ships. I mean, it's the, the, the console slots and the, and the way you can train up your, your bridge officers, the combination of those items right there is just is so many different ways you can really make a specific ship. And I, I really look forward to having a setup where I, I've completely equipped myself for one, for one uh, aspect that enhances the overall team. So then other people on the team will have equipped their ships to sort of fill in a role. It's going to yeah. be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. All right. So like I was saying, you can join our forum over at jupitercolony.com. That's right. And uh, these shows come out on Tuesdays, depending on... Well, this one doesn't. <laughs> yeah. This, this depending, I was going to say, depending on the episode and, and how everything's going, we're, we're aiming for a Friday release for this special episode. Yeah. But you can find them over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, we look forward to seeing you every Tuesday for our regular... You can also uh, join us over at facebook.com slash jupiterbroadcast and on Twitter, you'll see yep. announcements of when we do... Uh, we're going to try to do more live and more calls, and we organize that over on Facebook. Right. So, there you have it. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this special episode of Stoked. We'll be back on our regular time next Tuesday.